In this project, we're going to deploy the lightweight Linux desktop environment Lubuntu on Google Cloud. On top of Lubuntu, we're going to deploy XRDP, which allows access to the desktop environment from a remote desktop client. There are several ways this project can be used. One common scenario is deploying it as a shared development environment for a small team. The desktop image we build includes all prerequisites required to clone and build any project on our channel for any cloud provider. The only thing you need to add are your access credentials. Another popular use case is running a lightweight Linux desktop as a jump box into your cloud environment. It's a cheaper alternative to using a Windows-based jump box. We'll begin by provisioning the mini Active Directory instance. This provides centralized authentication for our desktop users. As a part of the AD setup, several sample users are created. Their credentials are stored securely in Secrets Manager. Next, we'll use Packer to build a reusable Ubuntu image that has the desktop environment installed. We'll then take the image built from Packer and deploy a VM instance to test the desktop. Once the VM is initialized, you'll open a remote desktop client to the desktop server. At this point, you can pull out the credentials from Secrets Manager to start testing the desktop environment immediately after the build completes. Here, I'm going to log in as Raj Patel. Now let's cover the prerequisites for these GCP desktop builds. First off, there's a video out there called GCP and Terraform Easy Setup. I'll put a link at the top. That walks you through how you create a build identity in the GCP console and extract out the credentials.json you'll need to put in the project folder for the builds. So here's what you'll need for the builds. You need that Google Cloud account with the build identity and credentials.json for plugging into the build. You need the gcloud CLI, you need Terraform, and you need Packer. Now we're ready to build the code. So the first thing you want to do is go back to the GitHub documentation, navigate to the download this repository section, and copy the git clone command. We'll then paste this git clone command into our development environment. This will download the code and put you in the correct directory. So the first thing you want to do is run the check env script. Check env is going to make sure that you meet all the prerequisites and that you can log in. Here it comes back and says, hey, we don't have credentials.json. That's the Google Cloud specific file that has to be in the root directory of the project for us to make connections for Terraform and Packer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload that into my development environment. After uploaded, I'll rerun Check ENV, and it's going to come back and say, hey, we can log in into your Google Cloud account. So the next step is to run API setup. This is also Google Cloud specific. This will enable all the specific APIs we need for this build. Now we're ready to run the apply. The apply takes anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes. It's highly variable. Most of the time is in the Packer build. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave it down in the comments section and I will respond. The build has completed, so now let's go into the console and take a look at what got built. Let's first take a look at the VM instances. There are three VMs associated with this project. The first VM instance is the mini Active Directory instance. This is created by the mini AD Terraform module. You can use this module on your own projects. I'll put a link at the top to that project. Mini AD deploys a Samba 4 domain controller and some sample user accounts. Mini AD can run on very cheap instances and provisions quickly. It is ideal for demos and prototypes. The next VM instance is the Windows AD admin server. You use this server to manage the users and groups associated with this project and its mini AD deployment. In the demo, we show you how to create a new desktop user using this VM. The main event is the Lubuntu desktop instance. We first create an image with Packer, which installs a desktop environment. In the Packer build, we use Ubuntu as the base image and we install the Lubuntu desktop environment, XRDP, Chrome and Firefox, all the prerequisites for building anything on our channel. This includes Terraform, Packer, and Docker, along with the AZ CLI, GCloud CLI, and AWS CLI. Finally, we install Visual Studio Code and Postman for developing code. Immediately after the build completes, you can go into Secrets Manager and use one of the four sample user accounts for logging into the desktop environment. In the demo, we will log in as Raj Patel. So for the demo, the first thing you want to do is run the validate script in your development environment to get the public IP address of your Lubuntu desktop instance. So we want to copy the IP address, then bring up a remote desktop client, and paste the IP address into it. This is going to give you the XRDP login dialog. So what we want to do is log in as Raj Patel. So now we need to go back to Secrets Manager and get the password for Raj Patel. Now what's a little bit irritating here is I cannot copy and paste this into the XRDP dialog. I have to type it manually. Once I'm in the desktop environment, I can copy and paste. It's just the, for security reasons, the XRDP dialog does not allow you to copy and paste. So I've typed in Raj Patel's password manually into this dialog. 
Now we're in the desktop environment. So let's take a quick tour of the applications that are installed. First, we've got the browsers. We've got Firefox. And we also got Google Chrome. We've also got this application called Only Office. Only Office allows you to read Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and PDF files within this environment. Then we have Postman. Of course, Postman allows you to debug HTTP endpoints and microservices. Next, we have Visual Studio Code. When we build this desktop image, we include all the prerequisites necessary to build anything on our channel for any cloud provider. This includes Packer, Terraform, and Docker, along with the AZ CLI, GCloud CLI, and AWS CLI. So the only thing you need to do in this environment to build anything on our channel is provide your access credentials. So I've already done that. And so what we can do is go into the various setup modules here. And then I'm in AWS setup, so I'm going to run EMV. It's going to say, hey, you've got all the prerequisites installed. And then it's going to log in your AWS account and make sure it's successful. Also, we have the same thing for Azure. If the Azure setup. If I run check ENB there, it's going to go through, check the requirements, and log into your Azure account and make sure that that works. Finally, we have the GCP setup. And I, same thing, I can run check ENB. It's going to make sure all the prerequisites are installed, and then it's going to validate that it can connect to your Google Cloud account. The last application we're going to look at is KRDC. This is a remote desktop client for the Lubuntu desktop environment. This allows you to use this environment as a jump box into your cloud environment. Here, we're going to connect to the Windows AD admin server. Now let's walk through creating a new user for the desktop environment. The first thing you want to do is get into the desktop environment and you're going to, we're going to use this as a jump box. The next step is we're going to go back to the development environment and run validate and validate is going to give you either the fully qualified domain of the windows instance or the IP address. So this you take the uh, domain name here. Let's go back to the desktop environment and let's go to applications, internet, KRDC. We're going to use this environment, like I said, as a jump box. So we want to go in here, we do RDP. That is the, the AD admin box from the validate script. Click on that. And what we want to do is hit OK. And we're going to do R Patel. And we need to go back and get those credentials from Credentials Manager again. So I hit OK. Password from Credentials Manager. OK, so this is the Windows AD admin box. And so what we want to do is I'm going to go to full screen here. And I am going to say, um, first off, we're on the Windows side. And so the first thing you'll notice is there is a Z drive. The Z drive maps the shared file system what you can do on that is go in there and then go into the project directory and go to utils and remember when you add a new linux user on the windows side you have to specify gid number uid number and uid so we need to calculate what the next uid is so i'm going to go get next uid it's going to come back and say your next uid number for your next user you're going to add is 10,005. And I'm going to bring up administrative tools. Then I'm going to do active directory users and groups. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do view advanced features. So I'm going to go and expand my domain. And I'm going to go to the users folder. And I'm going to say new user. I'm going to call the user Mike Cloud. I'm going to give it a user login of mcloud. Hit next. You need to specify a password. I'm going to say don't expire. Hit next. And it's going to finish. So now we need to go to uh, my cloud. And we have a couple of things we need to set in here. The first thing is we go to attribute editor. And this is where you set the UID number, GID number, and UID. So I'm going to go to the GID number. And we're going to test set that to 10,001. That is the mCloud users group. OK. And then we're going to go back down to UID. And UID, I need to set the user ID of the Linux side. So I'm going to do mCloud, hit add. And then we need to specify UID number. 
And that's the one that we calculated to begin with. It's 10,005. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit OK. So now we've we've set the required attributes. Now we need to give some group membership. So I'm going to go back to properties here. And I'm going to say uh, member of. I'm going to say add and mcloud users. And let's just call this person in US. And then I'm also going to add and say Linux admins. And this user will also be able to sudo on the desktop environment. So I'm going to hit OK. Now, a quick thing you can test out here is you can go into um, here and say get next UID, hit run. And it's going to say 10,006 because 10,005 is now owned by the mCloud user. So at this point, we're ready to actually log into the desktop. So you bring up your remote desktop client. I'm going to hit connect. So we get the XRDB dialog. So I'm going to do mCloud. And I'm going to set the credential, use the credentials I set when I added the user. And there you go. You've logged in as mCloud. If I bring up a shell, I can say ID. And it's going to show you mCloud. You got the GID number, which is mCloud users. Then you have the different groups that I assigned. Since I did Linux admins, I should be able to do sudo bash. And I am now root. So that's the steps for adding a new user into your desktop environment. At this point, after you've uh, played with the desktop environment, it's now time to be a good steward of your cloud accounts. And what you want to do is destroy your project. So you're going to run the destroy. The destroy takes about 10 minutes for all the desktops.